All righty, so the Cedar Fair stockholders call was today at 10 a.m. and I took all the notes I possibly could of the entire stockholders call and I am just going to spit them out in this video. And if there's anything important, I'll discuss it. But a lot of these are just numbers. Um, there is some really cool information about the uh, ride announcements for 2024 and then also future investments that the park is actually doing some research into um, currently. So they have a whole new mindset about about developing some new experiences and they've hired a team for that so they dropped that little bit of tea that i thought was interesting but so it is no surprise that weather has impacted the parks um and it is starting to improve so they said that weather and the wildfires were impacting attendance at cedar fair parks except for the midwest park so parks like um cedar point and Kings Island were actually doing really well outside of the wildfires um, at Cedar Point for a bit. But Kings Island is actually having a really strong year. Um, 2023 season passes are low. Um, and Canada's Wonderland attendance was obviously affected by the wildfires in spring. Um, and the Midwest parks, again, make up a 6% increase um, in weather. So that's, uh, that's really cool. Cedar Fair as a total has a 4% increase in guest spending due to food and beverage mainly. The new mobile app, this is really interesting to you, is in development and is continuing and it's pretty far along in its development. Um, it will have payment options as well as wait times and it'll be extremely user friendly and it's going to roll out later this year at some parks and then a full rollout in spring 2024. So that's really exciting. Group attendance is up 11% due to school and youth events, while corporate events are um, at par with last year or lower than last year. Cedar Fair is not satisfied with the numbers that they are presenting um, currently, so they have uh, done an emergency mode to drive sales. I think a lot of you got that email. Um, so they're doing an emergency sale to drive sales and attendance at their largest parks. Um, and they believe that the discount they're offering to get in will be offset by the increase in guest spending that Cedar Fair is um, witnessing, which is actually true. That is concrete information that would translate um, to a higher revenue. Um, there were 737 operating days this year versus 708 days last year um, due to adding more school days in spring. Um, so there were 7.4 million guests versus 7.8 million guests, 501 million revenue versus 507. Um, fewer season passes were sold this year, mainly contributed to California's Great America and Knott's Berry Farm. So the California parks are holding the chain back significantly. It was mentioned a lot. Um, so uh, fewer season passes have led to 300,000 less visits. Canada's Wonderland and Knott's Berry Farm make up a 200,000 attendance loss. Um, and they attributed that again to uh, bad weather and wildfires. The resort properties are actually doing significantly well and are up. Cost of goods, so this is really key information. Cost of goods is down over last year despite inflation. So there's a 3% to 6% decrease in labor costs and a 2% decrease in operational costs for the 2023 season so far. Um, for adjusted EBITDA, there is 151 million versus 171 million the year before. Uh, revenues are up 11% in July 2023 versus uh, July 2022, um, roughly about $40 million. So that is good news, but that is attributed to, again, a higher average ticket. Um, and uh, they are adding and reducing. So this is this was T adding and reducing days at parks where appropriate to control costs. Um, so again, what they mean by that, for example, um, Canada's Wonderland has added an additional week in January to Winterfest, and um, they've added Fridays to the September schedule. Um, whereas um, other parks are canceling their Halloween events and there are rumors that Carowinds might actually not be year round anymore, but we'll keep an eye on that. I'm going to touch on that a little later. They kind of drop a major hint in the question period. Um, Knott's and California's Great America are down 9% in season pass sales. So those two parks were attributed to the season pass decline. Um, strategic, this is T information, strategic 2024 season capital and passes. So 3.2 million passes were sold in 2022. 
2023, despite it being down, is still the second best year for season passes. Um, they plan on a more attractive pricing for the 2024 season passes in key markets. And then as they sell and get to their targets for their season pass sales, they're going to raise the prices. Um, so most parks will announce their new rides in the next two weeks. Finest, uh, they plan on having the finest thrill rides in the industry. Few additional surprises for thrill seekers are on the way and family and thrill entertainment as well. Adding more unique experiences that broaden the guest experience, Cedar Fair is looking to add even further unique things to draw in new guests that they currently do not draw in, and they look forward to exploring these options down the road with a team. Streamlining labor and overhead costs um, are one of the targets that Cedar Fair is going to be focusing on for the remainder of this year and 2024. And new targets for 2024 will be announced to stockholders in November. So we'll have um, some information on that. So California parks are disrupted currently by bad weather, monsoon-like weather. Um, and the low season passes are going to impact them for the rest of the year, um, Cedar Fair has warned. The Schlitterbahn parks are also not doing so hot. The Prestige Pass is expanding to more properties, um, but will not become the core pass they confirmed. Some year-round parks will no longer be year-round. This is what they said on the stockholders call in the question period. Uh, they did not say which parks, but um, that's T, so keep an eye on that. Uh, Carolyn's attendance greatly impacted due to weather and Fury 325. Um, and they are not saying no to any merge or purchasing agreements. If a park has an attractive portfolio and is looking to merge or be purchased, uh, they will explore that. So they did not say no to that. So that is the stockholders call. Definitely a lot of uh, T information in there uh, in terms of the future of Cedar Fair. They definitely seem to be wanting to become more of a theme park with broader um, guest experiences and not just relying on roller coasters and flat rides to bring people in. Um, and I think that's really smart. And I would love to see what that translates into in the next five to 10 years. Anyways, thanks so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, comment down below and I'll try and answer them to the best of my ability. Thanks so much for watching today's analysis of the stockholders call. And obviously, I'll have my 2024 predictions for Canada's Wonderland, my final ones, um, either later today or tomorrow. Anyways, guys, have a good one. Bye.